Welcome back everyone to Learning by Teaching. Today we're in Dynamics and we're going to solve problem 14.62, okay? So it says, an athlete pushes against an exercise machine with a force that varies with time as shown in the first graph. Also, the velocity of the athlete's arm acting in the same direction as the force varies with time as shown in the second graph. Determine the power applied as a function of time and the work done in t equals to 0.36. All right, so what we have in here is our function, our force as a function of time, and, uh, and here we got our velocity as a function of time. So in order to solve this problem, what we need to do is we need to follow our equation, 1410, of, for our power equation, that is force times velocity, all right? So since we're given the, function, the, the force and the velocity of, as functions of time, what we can do is find our power as function of times as well. All right, so first thing to notice is that our force is breaking into two from two time intervals. So our first time interval is from zero to 0 0.2 and our second time interval is from 0 0.2 to 0 0.3. So we're going to start doing our problem by do, uh, breaking those time intervals. So first we start from zero all the way to 0 0.2. And what we have is that our force is equal to 800 newtons and it doesn't change at all. So we got 800 newtons from here. Our velocity, which is our graph below, well, our velocity doesn't change in these two time intervals. It's the same, but it's a straight line. Therefore, we can uh, replicate this velocity as a, as a linear function. So as a linear function, we need the slope. So we need the rise over the run. So we got the rise is 20 and the run is 0 0.3. Multiply by x axis, in this case, the x axis is time plus the y intercept. However, this velocity starts at zero, therefore our y intercept is zero. Then what we can do is say, hey, our power is going to be the multiplication of these two. So we got 800 multiply by 20 divided by 0 0.3 t and if we put this into our calculator, this will give us a total of 53.3 kilowatts, okay? So I'm putting my units as kilo. And then, so we're done with the first interval. The second interval is going to be from 0 0.2, where we left, all the way to 0 0.3, which is the end, okay? So what is the force in this case? So the force in this interval is this linear line in here. So same thing again, we can model as a linear equation. So we need the rise over the run. Well, we actually, our rise is negative 800 divided by the run. Well, the run is equal to 0 0.1, okay? So from 0 0.2 to 0 0.3, there is 0.1 multiplied by t, plus the y-intercept. Okay, so for the y-intercept, as we can see here, we went down 800 by 0 0.1 that we run. So all the way to 0 0.1 here, we will go up another 800, and another 0 0.1 will be 800 more. So since we have 800, then we will have 1600, and then we will have 2400. So, we got 2400 and this is our equation for our force. If we can, we can simplify this by doing this fraction. This fraction will give me negative 8,000 T plus our 2400. So we're done with our force. And the good thing is that the velocity is the same equation for our previous step. So this one over here, we got 20 over 0 0.3 therefore we can calculate right ahead our power which is going to be the multiplication of our negative 8000 t plus 2400 multiply by our 20 over 0 0.3 t and if we plug this into our calculator we will first have negative uh, five hundred and thirty-three point three t square because we multiply the negative eight thousand with 
the fraction, then we will have plus, when we multiply our 2400 times the fraction, that will give us a total of 160t. Okay, just to remind you, I'm doing the power, I'm saying units of kilowatts, so I'm going to have a little bracket just indicating that this is in kilowatts. So now we found our power. So the question was to determine the power as a function of time, okay? So we did that for our two intervals. So we got power as a function of time, power as a function of time. All we need, oh, by the way, I made a small mistake in here. This is supposed to be T. So we got 53.3T. And then in here we got our negative 533T squared plus 160T. So those are our two powers as uh, a function of time for the two intervals. And the last thing we have to do is the work done in t equal to 0 0.3. And in order to do that, well, we have to know that the work done is going to be equal to the integral of the power with respect to time. So if we do that, knowing that we have the function for power, so we got our function for power, but we have two time intervals. So we're going to split this into two integrals. So we're going to have first our integral from zero to 0 0.2. And what's the equation for power? Well, it's going to be 53.3 T dt. And then we're going to add the second integral, which belongs to the other time interval from 0 0.2 all the way to 0 0.3 of our equation, which is negative 533.3 t square plus 160 t in all this times dt. So a friendly reminder, we can do this in our calculator, in our graphing calculator. So we just need to plug in the integrals with the boundaries and we're good to go. So if we plug this into our calculator, it will give me a total of 1.69. And the units for work is kilojoules. It's kilo because we've been working in kilo for our power. And joules because this is watts per second. Uh, watts and seconds. And we got kilojoules. So I hope you guys like the video. This is our answer for our problem. Please push the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.